going on? Welcome in the Matt Bernier Show here on DRF TV, live.drf.com, livestream.com, the Daily Racing Forms Twitter handle, that would be at DRF Inside Post, as well as the Daily Racing Forms Facebook page. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. This is the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show. Looking at some racing coming up this weekend, that would be Saturday, April the 7th. It's a giant day of racing coast to coast. And the focus is the three-year-olds, particularly the boys. But the girls also have a pretty big situation going on this weekend. And that's what this show is going to be all about. We'll dive into the three Kentucky Derby preps as well as the three Kentucky Oaks preps. And we'll take them region by region. If you listen to this show podcast version, first and foremost, thank you for doing so. If you are new to it or you're looking for other ways to digest it, you have YouTube. You have video.drf.com, you have iTunes, you have SoundCloud. If you watch it on YouTube, head on over, click that subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forms YouTube channel. You'll get all the latest videos coming out from DRF TV, stakes previews, formulator facts, you name it. Everything will come out there. If you just click on that subscribe button, you'll get all the latest from DRF TV. Like I said, this weekend is really the biggest weekend of 2018, I think of the racing calendar thus far, because you have these three Kentucky Derby preps, you have the three Kentucky Oaks preps, the winners of these races are all in. The second place finishers, they're into the big ones. The first Friday and the first Saturday in May at Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. So really, this is going to help really shape these races, the big ones, the Kentucky Oaks and the Kentucky Derby. We already saw two 100-point preps last weekend. We had a 100-point prep the weekend prior down in Louisiana. So we've got these three, and then we'll have one more next weekend in the Arkansas Derby down at Oaklawn Park. And really, this will determine what these starting fields and the horses in the starting gate are going to look like for those two races for the boys and the girls down at Churchill Downs. So uh, without further ado, like I said, we're going to take this region by region, and we'll pair them up, the boys race along with the girls race. Let's start out on the West Coast, where for my money, the most talent is concentrated for the entire sort of grouping for the three-year-olds, but particularly this race. Let's take a look at the field for the grade one Santa Anita Derby, $1 million the purse, mile and an eighth on the main track, obviously for three-year-olds. This is the field. If you're new to this show on the far right side, those are my odds. That's a value line, not the morning line. What I think represents fair value from a win standpoint on each one of these horses. And we'll take them in post position order. I'm not going to go into the deep dive with the three-year-old boys because most of those races we have full in-depth previews and the DRF bets race of the day is the Santa Anita Derby so you can head on over check that video out but I will give you all the odds and I'll give you a quick little bit on each one of them instilled regard one of my favorites I made him eight to one for Jerry Hollendorf or thought the risen star maybe he was on a little bit of a weird racetrack down at the fairgrounds nobody was really making up ground having said that even his best races he is considerably slower than the top two in here selfishly I hope he runs well just get into the starting gate for me and my buddy Lee Davis because we got a big future bet on him I didn't release that to anyone but back in December Lee was out there a little story time side note he goes, you got anything for the Derby? So then no, there's only one horse that I'm really interested in. His name's Instilled Regard. We got down on him. So the future bet for me this year, and again, knock on wood, fingers crossed, he actually gets into the starting gate because that's all you can ask for. It's Instilled Regard. Maybe I'll tweet that ticket out later on. Depends how he runs on Saturday. Made him 8-1. to one. Don't think he's a likely winner of the Santa Anita Derby. Just want him to run well, get some points, and get into the starting gate. The two is Orbit Rain. No disrespect, not going to spend much time here. 99 to 1. The number three, Bolt Doro, the other Mick Ruiz runner in here. Made him 7 to 5. Thought his San Felipe was very, very good. That 1 on 1 buyer is the highest last out in the field, or the co highest, along with Justify, who we'll talk about momentarily. I think this horse makes a lot of sense. Tactical speed, can sit a little bit, can be forwardly placed, has won from well off of it, won from off that long layoff. I know he's put up via disqualification and no McKinsey. That's disappointing, but. I think Bolt Doro is one of the horses to be in the Kentucky Derby, not just this race here on Saturday. The Santa Anita Derby made him 7-5. to five. Jimmy Chilla for Doug O'Neill. Maiden, no disrespect, 99-1. to one. Pepe Tono, think he is a horse that if he gets some crazy pace, maybe he comes and clunks up and gets a piece, 49-1. to one. The 6 is Justify. I've also made him 7-5, uh, to five, excuse me, for Bob Baffert. This horse has been brilliant in his two lifetime starts. One of them going two turns, one of them going one turn, one of them on a fast track, one of them on a muddy sealed track. There's still some talk about rain in the forecast for Saturday down at Santa Anita. Hopefully it holds off. Even if it doesn't, it's not going to be a problem for this horse. He has done nothing wrong. Sounds like he's working like an absolute monster. Crazy formulator fact here for you. Past three years, dirt winner last out three-year-olds route races in graded stakes for Bob Baffert. 24 for 48. 
50%. 38 of them in the money with the 295 ROI. He makes a lot of sense in here. He's going to get the acid test on Saturday. Made him 7-5. to five. And the number 7 is core beliefs for Peter Urton. Broke the maiden most recently over a speed-friendly racetrack. I do like the way that he dug in, though. He was challenged on the far turn, and he extended down the lane. I think he's a decent little horse. This is probably too much too soon. Made him 19-1. to 1. That leads us to the pick and the play in this spot. As much as I love instilled regard and I want him to run well, I'm picking Bolt Doro. I think Bolt Doro, he was the most impressive two-year-old to me last year. And I have to be honest, his run in the San Felipe, I know he didn't hit the wire first, but considering it was his first start since the Breeders' Cup, Thought he ran really, really well. I think he takes a step forward here, and I think he is primed for a big effort in Kentucky if he continues on. He just seems like a special horse. Justify seems like a special horse. This, again, could be the ultimate prep. If one of those two horses doesn't win, then maybe we've got some things to reconsider. But I think Bolt Doro and Justify are very clearly the horses to beat in here. That is not rocket science. Uh, so my pick in here is Bolt Doro. How am I going to play this race? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I made put together some plays here for this show. Uh, this weekend for me, I, there's not a ton that I'm jonesing to bet on. I think there's uh, some formful spots, and I think there's some races that are just totally discernible, and I can't figure out heads or tails of it. So uh, this weekend for me is much more about sitting back, watching, taking notes, and seeing what we get possibly going forward. For some sort of, sort of a play here, again, these numbers and the denominations are placeholders. Play however you want. We're going to play a $2 Superfecta. 3-6, three, 3-6 six, three, six in first and second, Bolt Doro and Justify. I'm going to key and still regard the number one horse in third, and then I'll also use a couple horses underneath the number five, Pepe Tono, as well as the seven core beliefs. Play that for $2, that's an $8 play. Play it backing up a little bit, $1 Superfecta, 3-6, Bolt Doro and Justify in first, then instilled regard in second, just in case one of those two horses, maybe they put the other one away and instilled regard comes from a little bit off of it. In third, I'll have the three and the six again. Again, Bolt Doro and Justify, and then we'll wrap things up with the five and the seven underneath Pepe Tono and Core Beliefs. Fascinating race, really looking forward to it. Think it may be the most important Kentucky Derby prep of the entire season. It's Bolt Doro, it's Justify, sprinkle in a little instilled regard, and then some horses that look a little bit overmatched. This could be the key prep going into the Kentucky Derby the first Saturday in May. Big one for the three-year-old Phillies at Santa Anita on Saturday. It's the grade one Santa Anita Oaks, a mile and a 16th on the main track. Let's take a look at that field. We'll take them right in post position order. The number one first Dudette, no disrespect, 99 to one. The number two Spring Lily, a horse that I liked in the Santa Isabel. A little bit disappointed with the effort, but I wonder if some of it had to do with that wet track that she ran on. Now, unfortunately, she may get another wet track again, but I think she ran too well in that start, too back for me to really be completely fooled by her. I made her 12 to 1, but I, I think there's some reasons to think maybe she'll run a little bit better here. The horse to beat is the number three Midnight Bisu for Bill Spar. It looks like she just, I think she's the best three year old filly in the country. I, I, 94 buyer speed figure in the last race. She lays over this field. She's got positive numbers coming into a race like this for Bill Spar. This is a good move for him in the past. You get Mike Smith. There's not really a lot to knock other than the price. I made her even money, and I expect her to be considerably shorter than that. That's the number three, Midnight Bisu. The number four is, is Fool's Paradise. This is a maiden score last out over a good racetrack. And think you're up against it, 99-1. to 1. The number five, Finesse Beret, 49-1 to 1 for Bob Baffert. Why so high? Because, look, if Baffert thought that she was a dirt horse all along, he would have run her on dirt when he got her over here. Instead, she's been wallowing away or willowing away whatever whatever the saying is there she hasn't been very good on the turf as i'm trying to say 49 to 1 that's a pass for me the number six exuberance for ian cruel jack another horse she's a graded stakes placed horse she ran second behind dream tree in that lost virgin is i think she's okay she was on the best part of the racetrack throughout i think she's up against it 19 to 1 the number seven is spectator i think a lot of people are going to be looking for a fresh face in here perhaps spectator is that fresh face you get javier aboard for phil d'amato second off the bench she was impressive in that return effort that now one or two other than now she's got to stretch out in distance and face the big girl midnight bisu i think she has a puncher's chance though six to one the number eight we all have dreams impressive maiden score most recently for michael mccarthy but was out there contested legitimate fractions throughout i thought it was a good effort but this usually is not a positive move from mccarthy moving from a maiden score last out or a winner last out second off the layoff i, I don't know i mean stretching out in distance i don't know that this is going to be a huge issue for her, but at the same time I'm not sure that she's really ready for a stage like this. Made her 19 to 1. And the number 9 is 13 squared for Bob Baffert. She, again, was a stakes place horse most recently in that Santa Isabel. Well beaten by Midnight Bisu. I see no reason why things are going to change here. And I think she moved up tremendously on that wet track. If you get another wet track, certainly one to keep an eye on. Dry track, I'm dubious. Made her 6 to 1. 
That leads to the pick and the play here for this race. Uh, the pick is Midnight Beast, and we're going to take a look back at that Santa Isabel. Thought she was tremendous. Never thought she was a loser. Uh, the fact that she broke as sharply as she did, she waited a little bit, she came to hand, then she loomed on that far turn and dusted the field down the lane. Uh, she finished with her ears pricked. I thought it was an awesome effort. She is very, very impressive. Uh, we've Dan Illman and I have liked her since she really debuted against Dream Tree and ran just a bang up race. And then we both liked her in the Desi Arnaz. And then we both liked her in Santa Inez. And then you come back in that Santa Isabel. And now we're at that point where the price is short enough where eh, I don't love her. But I do think going forward, I think she's the horse to beat as far as the three year old fillers are concerned. I think she should be the favorite for the Kentucky Oaks. As far as a play in this race is concerned, this is realistically one that I might sit back on and just kind of watch and see if Midnight Bisu does what I think she's supposed to do. If I had to make a play in here, though, I'd probably play a straight $10 exacta. Midnight Bisu in first, and I, I talked about Spring Lily. I, I feel like I, I, maybe I look, I've been wrong a lot in the past, but it, I thought she ran way too good two starts back, way too well, way too impressive to think that she just can't run at all. She's already graded stakes place. She finished third, beaten by a country mile in that most recent run. If the track is wet, certainly I'm still concerned, but I, there, I just think that there's something more here. John Sheriff seems to think that she can sit a little bit and come with a little bit of a run. I think Spring Lily is okay. So I'll play a $10 straight exact of the number three Midnight Bee suit over the number two. Spring Lily in the grade one Santa Anita Oaks. No question about it. The horse to beat is Midnight Bee suit. If she gets through this and does so impressively, probably the favorite for the Kentucky Oaks. Opening weekend at Keeneland Racecourse, Lexington, Kentucky. It could be a bit of a winter wonderland in April. Ugh, it's gross to even think about. Let's take a look at the field for the Bluegrass Stakes. It's a grade two event. It's a big purse. Million dollars. Mile and an eighth in the main track. This, this race has been a little bit lackluster as far as actually producing serious runners for the Kentucky Derby. But again, random things happen. Sample sizes are too small. Maybe a bit of a rash decision going a number of years back, downgrading the bluegrass and the wood to a grade two, while the other races are all grade ones. I, you know, again, certain things happen. I don't think it's really indicative of the history of this race, but recently, facts are facts. This race hasn't been very productive as far as the Kentucky Derby itself is concerned. We'll find out if that changes Saturday. We'll find out if it's going to be run in a blizzard. We'll find out if it's going to be run on a sloppy track. Let's take him in post position order. The number one is Zing Zang. Made him 49 to 1 for Steve Asperson. Just way too much work to do. Comes from way too far out of it. It's going to need a complete pace meltdown to get up. Sporting chance. A lot of people like this horse. I think talent wise for Lucas, this is a really nice runner. Made him 10 to 1 simply because I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe this isn't really his game. Maybe he's going to be a one turn kind of horse. Pat Day Mile, Woody Stevens. Alan Jerkins up at Saratoga, something like that. Again, 10 to 1 for Sporting Chance. California Knight is the 399 to 1. The number four, Kanthaka. I made him 7 to 1. Think he's going to be the wise guy horse in here for Hollendorfer and Leperu. Thought he ran well in the San Felipe. Pretty bad stumble at the beginning. Came on with it at the end. Uh, the tough thing for me to analyze about that race as a whole, the San Felipe. Kanthaka was a half length ahead of Peace. Peace came back to earn a 72 in the Sunland Derby. Uh, Peace isn't very good. He's certainly not a derby contender. Kentaka, a lot of people are going to look at the figs and say he is one of the contenders and one of the horses to beat in here. I see Jimmy Creed. I still maintain. I think he's a closing sprinter going one turn. Made him 7-1. to one. Quip for Rudolph Brissett. I think this is an interesting horse. I thought that Tampa Bay Derby that he ran in and won was very impressive. 94 buyer. co highest last out in the field. Uh, if you believe that fig, he certainly is a major player in here, second off the bench. You would imagine this is just a means to an end. Let's get him to the Kentucky Derby because we've already got the points. Don't really have to worry about having him cranked up and ready to go. But going back a few weeks to that graphic and that sort of thing that I talked about where really since the point system has been implemented, the winner of the 100-point derby preps, those have been the only horses that have won the Kentucky Derby. So if you just want to use that as the barometer through five years, then this is kind of important. You have to win to have a chance. Made Quip 7-1. to one. The number six is Marconi for Todd Pletcher. I think he wants to run all day. Fascinating that Ryan Moore is here. Made him 13-1. to one. The number seven, Blended Citizen for Doug O'Neill. Nice horse on synthetic and turf. Don't think dirt's his game. 99-1. to one. The number eight is Gotta Go for Ian Wilkes. They're going to try the route again. 
come to me when they turn him back, going one turn, whether it's the Pat Day, the Woody Stevens, whatever else it is. Any of those races, I think, would fit him a lot better than these route races, 32 to 1. The number 9 is Tis Mischief for Dale Romans. Romans has the 9 and the 10 free drop Billy. Of the two, much prefer free drop Billy. Tis Mischief has just not taken a step forward from 2 to 3, but... If you think he was compromised by possibly a racetrack, by a slow pace in that Tampa Bay Derby, things heat up a little bit more, maybe he comes with a run. As for free drop Billy, I thought he was disappointing in the Gotham, but at the same time, I'm going to try to be very, very positive and spin maybe a narrative that is inaccurate, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. The one-turn mile I don't think is what he wants. I think he's a two-turn true router, true stayer. I wonder if he ran as well as he did in the Holy Bull, I know he was handled pretty easily by Audible, but Audible came back to win the Florida Derby last weekend. I wonder if the plan was let's not have him peak too early, run him in the Gotham, realize that this is a soft field that he would have to run against in the Gotham. He still got some points out of it, but he wasn't fully ready to go. Again, I am trying to spin this narrative. I don't know that there's any truth to this. Now we get him ready to go. He comes back to Keeneland. He's a grade one winner over the surface already. Distance is going to be his friend. Should work out a decent trip in here. I know he's got a, a draw toward the outside, but not too concerned about it. Free drop Billy, I think he's got a big chance. I picked him second, made him 7-1. to one. The number 11 is Good Magic, the reigning defending champion, the two-year-old champion from last year. He won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. It's still his only win to date. Uh, I thought his fountain of youth was very poor. I didn't like it. I thought he had every opportunity, and he didn't go by. Timeform US has it color-coded as a mildly speed-friendly racetrack at Gulfstream that day. I still didn't think there was much excuse. Thought he was flat down the lane. You couple that with a formulator fact for Chad Brown. Past two years, dirt second after the layoff graded stakes races. Two for 26 with a 50-cent ROI. I just... I, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, to me, is the only exceptional race that he's run. I thought he ran well in that champagne. But really, other than that... I. He's fine, but I don't think he has any edge on this field. Unless you think that he's going to run the 100 buyer again. If he runs the 100, he's going to win, plain and simple. But you strip the 100 from his PPs, he's yet to crack 90. Not saying he can't do it. Certainly can't. Uh, not saying that. But at the same time, I don't want to gamble on it. I made him 6-1, to one, and I know there's no shot in hell that he's going to be 6-1. to one. The 12 is Flame Away, one of the more underappreciated three-year-olds that we have during this season. Uh, all he does is show up and run. I don't know how far he's going to want to go. I think he's a game horse. He's gritty. He can win on turf. He can win on dirt. You name it. He's won on synthetic. I think he's a cool horse. Uh, he's an Ontario bred. I still wonder if, sure, the Kentucky Derby is important. And here I am saying I don't know how far he wants to go. We'll find out. Maybe ultimately distance will be a bit of a bugaboo for him. See, he's an Ontario bred. Always got to be thinking Queen's Plate down the road. Made him 7-1 to one here on Saturday afternoon. Machismo is the number 13 for, for Luch Stables and Anthony Cordarolo. This is a horse I thought he ran very well in the Fountain of Youth. I'm dubious of the South Florida form, but at the same time, if I'm taking a horse out of the Fountain of Youth, it's this horse because he ran against a track where there wasn't really any sort of serious pace signed on. It was a speed-friendly racetrack according to time form. And that was his first time going two turns. I think he takes a step forward here. I think that race was much better than it looks on paper. Having said that, he's going to need to run faster. Made him 9-1. to one. And the 14 is Arrow Walk. First time out for Doug O'Neill. Uh, I've just never been blown away by this horse. I think he's okay and just okay. That's not good enough here. 99-1. to one. Not going to talk about the also eligible in this race. The number 15 determinant leads us to the pick and the play for this year's Bluegrass. We're going to take a look back at the replay of the Fountain of Youth that I just spoke about because my pick is Machismo. Machismo is in those Luch stable colors. He's the only one making up any significant ground from the back of the pack. He came home faster than any other horse in the entire race. Came home in 31-2. and two. I think there's some upside to this horse. I don't think he's going to win the Kentucky Derby, at least right now. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I thought he ran very, very well there. And there's no reason to think that if he can be a little bit more forwardly placed than he was... Last time out at Gulfstream, if he can sit two or three legs off of it, even with that outside draw, I, I think there's reason to believe that he's going to take a step forward here and he could win at a big number. Now, that leads me to the pick and the play here, or the, the play piece of the pick and the play. Again, I, I don't trust really anyone in this field. I like free drop Billy. I always have. But he's going to need to prove to me, and again, I'm cooking up that whole story, hopeful that that's what it actually is. I don't trust many of these runners in here. So for me, this is going to be a very, very basic play. And some would call it kind of a kind of a weak play. But this is how I'm going to go about this race. $10 to win and show. I've talked about the $10 show, but occasionally using it is nothing more than a backup. I realize it takes away from capital on the win end. But with a horse that should be double-digit odds, 
If he runs third, I'll make back the win bet that I would lose. And if he wins, fine. I'll get both of them. So $10 to win and show on the number 13 Machismo in the Bluegrass Stakes. We'll find out where it is run as far as conditions because it sounds like it could be anything from a snow globe to well, maybe it could just be a little bit drizzly. We'll find out. But this is going to be an important race for a number of horses in here. Most notably, the two-year-old champion, Good Magic. Can he rebound to that form that won him the Breeders' Cup out at Del Mar? Or will we get another sort of flat and dull effort like we had down in South Florida most recently? I had mentioned that I think that Midnight Bisu is the best three-year-old filly in training. A filly in the grade one Ashland at Keeneland on Saturday may argue that a little bit. Let's take a look at that field. Short but select field. The number one is Monomoy Girl. In many cases, many people's eyes, she is the best three-year-old filly in training for Brad Cox. Most recently, a winner of the Rachel Alexandra that was her first start as a three-year-old. She dusted a field. And okay, maybe the quality down there was a little bit blah, but the fact that she did it in a an entirely different running fashion than she had shown in some of those other races to date anyway, that she came from well out of it, made this big brush on the far turn and just completely decimated the field. Visually, she's very, very impressive. I understand anyone that says that she's the best three-year-old filly. I think she is slightly below Midnight Beast, who we will find out more on Saturday afternoon. I made her 7-5. to five. She's likely to go off shorter than that. The number two is Eskimo Kisses for Kenny McPeak. Thought she ran very well in the Fairgrounds Oaks most recently. I know she had a setup. She had some pace to run at, but I thought the best stride was late. I'm hopeful that she runs well here, but not too well because there is a part of me that would be very interested in seeing her at a mile and an eighth the first friday in may in the kentucky oaks eskimo kisses i made her five to two patrona margarita for brett calhoun i know she won that pocahontas late as a two-year-old i know that she took a little bit of a step forward from a buyer standpoint in the rachel alexandra i just don't know how good she actually is i made her 19 to 1 cs in charge for dale romans winner of the sun coast a mild upset seven to one that sun coast has come back absolutely horrific really really poor race uh, she's going to be forward in a race that doesn't feature a ton of early gas. That makes her at least interesting mildly, but at the same time, that, the form of that race, my goodness, really, really bad, 16-1. to 1. And Dina Del Sur, the number five for Tom Albertrani, trying dirt for the first time. Thought she was good in the Florida Oaks, but I, I still wonder ultimately distance-wise, is longer going to be better for her? Is she going to be best suited up at Belmont? Sort of one turn on the turf, seven-eighths of a mile, something along those lines. 16-1 to 1 for me in this race. The number six is Ipanema Beach, 12-1. to 1 in here for Rusty Arnold. I think this horse is sneaky good and sneaky interesting. The blinkers come on. She had uh, way too much to do two starts back and her last start as a two-year-old in the golden rod. She comes back in a maiden special weight race. She's still a maiden, by the way. And I thought she ran really well considering there was no pace signed on. And she was on the best part of the racetrack, but all things considered, I thought there was a pretty significant speed bias down at Tampa that day. That was on February the 9th. She's been gone for some time. Blinkers go on. If she can get a little bit closer, stay within shouting distance, I think she's got an interesting shot to maybe not win, but certainly round out some exactas and trifectas and anything else like that. Made her 12-1. to 1. And the number seven is Typhosha for Doug O'Neill coming in from Arkansas. She tried the Martha Washington two back. No match. She tried a non-winner's one other than most recently. No match. Beaten as the 7-5 to five favorite. I don't like her in here. 13-1. to one. Leads to the pick and the play in this spot. The pick for me is going to be Monomoy Girl. I think she might just be better than everyone else in here right now. I wonder if at a mile on an eighth, possibly Eskimo Kisses could be the better of them. Having said that, as far as a play is concerned, I think the one and the two, I have them seven to five and five to two. There is a difference there. There's a discrepancy, but it's not some enormous piece. And I think they are very clearly the two horses to beat. What I'm interested in doing, the, the value is not going to be there for an exacta. And playing either one of them to win, eh, I don't love the idea of that. I'd rather try to play some sort of an exacta with both of them in first and keying a longer price underneath. And that's what I'm going to do in this spot. So we'll play a $10 exacta with the one and two in first. Then number six, Ipanema Beach going out for Rusty Arnold. His numbers at Keeneland, they're always very, very good. I think this horse is better than it looks on paper. She's going to be a giant price. I think she can hit the board. So maybe she doesn't run second or third. In this play, I'm going to hope that she does run second beneath one of the big girls. So I'm going to go with a $10 exacta, one, two, over six in the grade one Ashland, recognizing wholeheartedly. Monomoy girl, strictly the horse to beat. But I'm going to be very interested to see how the number two Eskimo Kisses runs, possibly looking forward to a race like the Kentucky Oaks. Final race we'll take a look at here on the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show for the weekend of April the 7th is the Gazelle for three-year-old fillies at 
And the third 100-point prep for the Kentucky Derby this weekend is the Grade 2 Wood Memorial up at Aqueduct, another track in another region that looks like there could be some weather and it could be a big factor in this race. Let's take a look at that field. You've got a field of nine signed on, and I, I think it's it's an interesting race. I don't know how much quality there is here, if I'm being frank, but I think it is an interesting race because I, I think there's a scenario where you can poke a hole in the favorite and likely the heavy favorite in this spot. Post position order, the number one heart full of stars coming in from the West Coast for Phil D'Amato. Visually unimpressive, in my opinion, breaking the maiden most recently. Very late with the lead change. Don't like the chances. 24 to 1. The number eight Forenze Fire for Jason Service. He really hasn't gotten a heck of a lot faster since winning the grade one champagne last year. He's actually regressed, if you believe the figs. I think he's a one-turn horse. I think this is going to be too far. 12 to 1. Number three is Evaluator from Michael Dilger. This is a horse. I liked him as a turf horse early on. He never seemed to improve. Wins the Sleepy Hollow last year, a New York State bred race at a million to one. Comes back, ran well in that Damon Runyon, but again, distance. I'm not sure how far he wants to go. Made him 16 to one. The blinkers go on for the first time. The number four, Old Time Revival for Kenneth Decker. Thought he ran big in the Gotham. Big, big effort. Went out there, set legitimate fractions. Just got run down late by a horse that's probably just more talented than he is and enticed. Old Time Revival made him 12 to one. Speaking of enticed, he is going to be a heavy favorite in the grade two uh, Wood Memorial, and I just don't know that two turns is his thing. I spoke with Mike Watchmaker for the Weekend Warrior piece, and he said everything that I have thought about this horse all along. I wonder if he's a one-turn horse. His mom, it's tricky, was much better at these sort of middle distances or even shorter. I, look, he was really good in that Gotham most recently, and he was really good in the Champagne. I think he won the Kentucky Jockey Club because at that time he may have just been ahead of all the other two-year-olds. Now, we've seen that Jockey Club has become a tremendously productive race. But again, the point is, I think that maybe he just caught them at a time where he was ahead of them and they have all started to catch up to him. He's gotten better, don't get me wrong, but I just wonder about this distance. I don't know about a mile and an eighth. It wasn't really what his mom wanted to do. We'll find out. I made him four to one, and I know he's going to be a heck of a lot shorter than that in this spot. Number six, catch 22, Napal Chatterpaul. Blinkers go on, uh, clipped heels, most recent start, draw a line through it. Having said that, horse isn't fast enough, 49 to 1. The number seven is King Zachary. King Zachary might be the wise guy horse of this year's Wood Memorial. I made him 5 to 1 for Dale Romans. Thought he was visually tremendous in that most recent start. I know he was out there and it was soft fractions, but the way that he kicked away down the lane, very, very impressive. And two starts back, he ran enormous considering clipped heels almost went down early on in the race was really the only horse making up any sort of significant ground. Finished very well. I think this horse, I think he's actually pretty good. I understand he hasn't run fast yet, but this is more of a production play going forward than necessarily what he's done thus far. Made him 5-1, to one, but I believe he's probably going to be the wise guy horse in here. The number 8 is Restoring Hope. Another one coming in from the West Coast. Bob Baffert sends this one. Maiden winner last out. He has always spoken highly of this horse. I've yet to see it really on the racetrack. He hasn't done anything to blow me away. I think he's a grinder. I don't know. Now, look, if you don't think there's a ton of quality in here, perhaps a grinder and a horse that can stay a mile and an eighth is all you're going to need in order to win. I would rather see a horse like this end up in a race like the Belmont Stakes where he has a little bit of forward speed, forward ability, and he can just click off 12 and 1, 12 and 1, 12 and 1, 12 and 1. He's not going to blow you away. He's not going to do anything sexy, but I wonder if he's kind of uh kind of a stayer I, I don't like him here but i can understand that he has some positives going for him made him five to one and the outside runner vino rosso todd pletcher i picked vino rosso in the tampa bay derby i thought his sam f davis was really good he idled on the far turn finished full of run galloped out in front of everyone he goes off at two to one in the tampa bay derby and he does the exact same thing that was with blinkers too i, I don't know I don't know what to make of this horse anymore. I still feel like there's something here. Perhaps getting back to Aqueduct is going to be beneficial. Keep in mind, this is where he broke his maiden way back in November. I feel still like there's something here. He can't look that good and not... Maybe he just hasn't put it all together mentally yet because on the turns, uh, he just doesn't seem to run very well. On the straightaways, he finishes very, very nicely. Mile and an eighth, I think, is going to be to his liking. I think there's some things to like here and some positives. I Maybe we still haven't seen the best of this horse yet. The outside draw, I also kind of like that as well. Made him 9-2. to two. The pick and the play in a race like this. Again, I, this may not be the best field that we've ever seen assembled for the Wood Memorial. I think King Zachary is sneaky. We're going to go back and take a look, if we could, at his maiden score. Again, I thought he was very, very impressive. It was something that at least gives me the impression that there is more here. I know he has not run fast yet, 
but I think he can run fast, and that's what you're looking for this time of year. Not what you've done, but what can you do going forward. I think a mile and an eighth is his friend. I like that Robbie Alvarado comes up to ride. Romans has positive numbers with this kind of move. Past five years, dirt, maiden winner last out, route races, graded stakes, 6 for 20 with a 640 ROI. I think he's going to be a bit of a wise guy horse. I believe he's 20 to 1 on the morning line. He might be half that by the time it's all said and done. I made him 5 to 1. This will be one of the horses that I'll actually be betting this weekend if the odds are dictating that I can make a play on here, and here is the play. I'll play $20 to win on King Zachary at odds of 5-1 to one or greater and take a shot in a race where, again, I think Entice might be best going one turn, and the rest of the field is kind of eh, eh, blah. I think Vino Rosso is still one that could run well. And again, restoring hope, I think maybe he could be a Belmont kind of horse down the road, but right now I just don't love him, man. What the price is probably going to be, he'll be an underlay for me. So for me... In the Great Two Wood Memorial on Saturday afternoon, it's all about King Zachary. He is the pick. He is also the play, $20 to win. Final race we'll take a look at here on the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show for the weekend of April the 7th is the Gazelle for three-year-old fillies at Aqueduct. Now, this is a race, as we take a look at the field, very, very slow. Very slow horses right now when we talk about the horses that are running at the Ashland at Keeneland or the horses that are running out at Santa Anita and the Oaks. Uh, the Gazelle is a decided step backwards from what they've done thus far. Now, you could certainly project forward moves from them, but at the same time, I don't think you're looking at forward moves by 20 points. And that's what they these girls would need in order to get on par with some of the other girls that we've seen so far and talked about. So post position order, the number one Mo Shopping for Todd Pletcher. She really hasn't done a heck of a lot as far as speed is concerned. She is two of four lifetime. Uh, she's going to need to run much better than what she did at Laurel most recently. Made her 13 to 1. Number two, Virginia Key. Another Pletcher entrant in here. I mean, this is a horse that Todd has not handled like she's particularly good. Uh, just calling a spade a spade. When she debuts in that maiden special, she ships over to Tampa. She gets the job done, but she's 4 to 1 at Tampa for Pletcher. That's usually red flags galore. And then she comes back in a starter allowance. And she's just kind of even. I, I don't think she's anything special. Made her 19 to 1. The number three is Midnight Disguise for Linda Rice. This is a sea monster on the racetrack. She is an enormous, enormous filly. You look at the pedigree, you would think that distance is going to be a problem for her. That the longer they go, the worse it's going to be. I think it's the opposite. She is just that big. She's a hulk of a horse. But she ran well in the busher most recently. And you know what? Considering there was slow fractions in there, she was wide throughout. It took her a little while to get the engine cooking. But once she did, she just kept going on. I don't think this is going to be a problem for her. It's also worth noting, and I think it's important. Two back in the Busanda, she won at a mile and an eighth. Distance is not going to be an issue for her here at the mile and an eighth. Made her 5-2. to two, Thinks she is the most likely winner of this race. The number four is Smoking Patty Lassie. She won the Beyond the Wire most recently, and then she guess what? She's 3-for-3. Three three. She hasn't done anything wrong in the track. 81 buyers, highest last out in the field. I just thought she was visually unimpressive. She was just spinning the wheels in the far turn. There was a horse that if if Limited View had not hit the wall the way that she did, I don't think Smoking Patty Lassie wins that race. I don't think anybody else was running behind her. I, I, you got to prove to me that you belong here. Two turns going to be a question. Made her 7-2. to two. The number 5, Sarah Street. Liked her in the busher. Thought she ran just fine. No match for Midnight Disguise. I think she's okay and just okay. Made her 5-1. to one. And the number 6 is My Miss Lily for Mark Henning. Joe Bravo picks up the mount. They paid a boatload for this tap at Philly. And you know what? The busher, really, that's not the race to make a decision on her because I think she ran well in spite of the trip. She really had nowhere to go. I wonder if she could have found a clean seam earlier if she threatens Midnight Disguise or at least makes it a little bit closer. Made her 7-2. to two. Leads us to the pick and the play in here. We're going to go and take a look back at the busher right now if we could. My Miss Lily is the horse that's down on the inside in those familiar Cortland Farm silks. Can't really find a clean path of it. Never has to really check or steady, but doesn't have a clean go of it. And on the far outside, you get the sea monster coming down the center of the lane. That's Midnight Disguise. I think with a cleaner effort, My Miss Lily might be able to turn the tables. It might offer a little bit of value. She is going to be my pick in the gazelle as far as a play is concerned i only want those two horses my miss lily midnight disguise as a whole this is a slow group give me the two horses that i think have run the best locally over this track and the horses that i think the distance is not going to be a problem for i will play a 20 dollars exacta box using the three and the six the three is midnight disguise and the six is my miss lily these girls are going to need to up their game in a pretty serious way though if they're going to be considered threats for the kentucky oaks the first friday in may 
A few more races that we normally do here on the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show, but it's a big weekend, so we want to get you a little bit of uh, added bonus material, getting ready for big Oaks preps and big Derby preps coming up this Saturday afternoon. If you've been watching live, live live.drf.com, livestream.com, the Daily Racing Forum's Twitter handle, at DRF Inside Post, as well as the Facebook page for the Daily Racing Forum. Thank you for doing so. If you've been listening podcast form, most of you do so. YouTube, video.drf.com iTunes, SoundCloud, a number of ways for you to find this program. You want to follow me on Twitter, at Bernier underscore Matt. Questions, comments, concerns, agree, disagree, whatever it may be, fire away at me on there. I continue to look over, if you've noticed and you've been watching on YouTube or watching live, that I keep looking over at the Southern Monitor because this is being recorded on Thursday afternoon. Obviously, it is the opening round of what I consider the best sporting event in the world, the Masters. My pick is Tommy Fleetwood, and he is in the featured group with Tiger Woods, and he's actually playing okay thus far. They haven't quite made the turn just yet. Uh, oh, they have made the turn. They're on the 10th hole. Neither here nor there. Nobody wants to hear about that. And by the time you listen to this on Friday, he might be in danger of not making the cut. We'll find out. Who knows? A lot of things can happen down at Augusta National between now and cut day uh, tomorrow afternoon. So as we always do here on Friday, if you've been listening live, you've already listened to the DRF Players Podcast with Peter Thomas Fornatel and Jonathan Kinchin. We are going to lead into the latest edition of Out of the Gate. We'll have all of the Kentucky Derby preps. We'll talk about Kentucky Derby top fives at the moment and realizing that the next two weeks, everything could just go and haywire. Crazy things can happen. And uh, we'll go over and we'll give you some best bets. And obviously, you'll get all sorts of good stuff from all the normal contributors to the Out of the Gate program. So without further ado, we'll throw it into that. If you've been listening, thank you. If you listen to podcasts, thank you. All of that, yada, yada, yada. Fire away at me on Twitter if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever it may be. Best of luck. This weekend, however you're playing, whatever you're playing, wherever you're playing, this has been the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show.